Hey everyone, I'm Jacqueline Maines, your hostess with the mostest at America's Best Restaurants. Today, our ABR Roadshow traveled to Milford, Wisconsin to check out Crawfish Junction, which is located right on Crawfish River. Let's go see what they have for us, come on. All right, so now I'm back in the kitchen with Chef Nate here, one of the owners and also the chef. So what's the first thing that I'm going to get to taste that you're gonna make for me? So today we're gonna to be doing the Big Bad Voodoo Ham Burger. Awesome, okay, where are we start? All right, we're gonna start with our burger. We hand patty them ourselves. Yeah, okay. From Wisconsin, small farm. Love that. So we make sure to get that on the grill. But before we do that, we have to make sure it's seasoned with our blackened seasoning in order to make the blackened burger. Heck yeah. So our next step is gonna to be to make sure to get our bun going on right away so we can get it toasted. Yep, love a toasted bun. And then we're going to get our ham starting to crisp up and saute off. All right. And now our bun's nice and toasted. So we'll plate up that part yep. of it. And wait for the rest. Oh, to get finished here, we're getting pretty close. The ham is nicely seared, and I'm gonna top this with the ham. Yep. Gives and then it we're some going height. to get our onions out. Okay. Or oh, yes, because you said the batter has some more Cajun y goodness in it. Yes, absolutely. Our blackened seasoning, our Cajun seasoning is in the uh, flour itself. All right, so we'll start by plating up your burger right now. Mm hmm. Get the little stowaways. Hit it with the sauce. Oh, that's gonna drip down my arm, I know it. <laughs> it will, it will. <laughs> All right, this thing looks kind of as big as my face almost. Oh, it's, all, cheers. it's already <laughs> dripping. Cheers. <laughs> I think it's on my chin. It's so <laughs> worth it. Oh my gosh, that sauce is so good. I can feel the heat like in the back a little bit. But that is Awesome spice. Love that flavor. Mmm. That's a burger to remember, man. That's a burger to remember. Well done. All right. I'm gonna sit down with Nate and his wife Becca. We're gonna chat a little bit more. We're gonna eat some more food. So you two, your actual story has a lot to do with this place. So tell us, tell us even just a little bit more about, you know, Crawfish Junction, yeah. but your particular story. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually started at Crawfish when the room that we're sitting in, there was, it was a dirt floor. There was no restaurant. It was just a bar, a neighborhood bar that uh -huh. had plenty of regulars. So I was the third person that the previous owners hired ever. Um, during that transaction, that was about 18 years ago, they put in the restaurant about 15 years ago. So I've been here through every menu change, every <laughs> everything that you can think of when we've come to this growth that we see here. Um, Nate, so I was a bartender, bar manager, waitress, and um, one Friday night, Nate came in and, and um, like, he hey. was, yes. <laughs> he, um, at the time, was a musician. That's how he made his money. That's what he did every weekend. Um, he did so well uh, that we actually uh, had him every Friday. So we, oh, he yeah. was our, instead of switching it up, he, for about two years, house. he was the house every Friday night. So we have a very busy fish fry. And having the music keeps everybody at bay when they have to wait too long. You know, when there's sure. a long wait for the table, they sat and listened to his music. Um, so we actually met here. And about eight years after our meeting here, we uh, he proposed to me right in the next room. That's so we awesome. met and got engaged here. <laughs> and um, a couple years, right around that time is when Tori, who also worked in the kitchen. So at that time I was a waitress. Tori came in in about 2012 mm -hmm. um, and he started working in the kitchen. Uh, shortly after that, um, there was the opportunity for somebody to buy it. And Tori bought it with another partner from our boss at the time. All right, so I'm looking at this beautiful piece of fish and I smell it smells delicious. Tell me what I've got in front of me. You have a Cajun seared walleye with a citrus lime butter. Lovely. The mock shoe is a corn salad 
known for yeah. in Louisiana. It's got a uh, classic kind of Cajun trinity to it, celery, onion, and a red bell pepper. Awesome. And yeah, please feel free swamp. to dig in. It's got a little bit of heat. In I it, will. What are you guys have in front of you? So mine is Nate's take on chicken and waffles. So obviously we've got the waffle. We've got our, um, we use our hand um, cut chicken tenders. Mm -hmm. So we only serve chicken tenders on, set on Sunday because we hand cut all of them. Everything's uh, hand breaded to order. Love Anytime that. somebody orders anything here. So we took our chicken tenders, the uh, waffles, and Nate makes a sauce that is a spicy bacon maple. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a spicy bacon. Maple syrup. Mm. And, and then, then what do you got? In front of me, I have our shrimp pole boy, Cajun shrimp pole boy. Mm -hmm. So a little more of those Cajun flavors coming yeah. through. You like um, to bring the spice, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But all of these options could also be served without a spicy component to it. Yeah. This is delicious. Thanks. This is some great flavor on the fish. Nice and flaky. And it's a nice piece of fish, too. Like, love that. And then you're going to still feel good after you eat it. Yeah. It's just got that beautiful spice, but then not as, as heavy as some other dishes. So this is up my alley for sure. And one yeah. of the things that we tried to yep. do, the, the first chef that was ever here, actually, he married us. He was the uh, the minister at our the wedding. Officiant. Oh, really? Yeah, he was the officiant. I suppose not a minister. He was the officiant at our wedding. It started with him, this tradition of made from scratch, this tradition of, you know, what is nobody else doing around here? One of the burgers that we don't have featured here is called the Trust Me. It's got an apple. It's got honey. It's got um, a peanut butter. Peanut butter. Huh. And it's the one menu item that's been on our menu since him, like because so many people come and, and like it. What we've always tried to do is just, what is there something that we can't get down the street or they can't get a town over? We, we just kind of think about what's the next step? What is the next thing that you know people are looking for in our small community? Mm -hmm. What would you say is your place within the community? Nate and I both came from Milwaukee. So Milwaukee is about 45 minutes east. Um, we're in the middle between Milwaukee and Madison. Madison's about a half an hour. So we've always been this location, even though it's in the middle of nowhere, it's kind of always been a meeting place. Mm -hmm. We've heard stories, you know, you come here on a Friday night and you see people waiting for their friends that this is just a halfway point for them to meet. Yeah. Um, and what's always been so special to me when it came to, craw came to crawfish was the people. So growing up in Milwaukee, there is, I, I moved out here and there's a whole different group of people that have a different perspective and were raised different from me. And that's always been what has drawn me. Anytime I thought I was going away from crawfish, it's always been the people that yeah. have always brought us back. Yeah. It's a very communi community oriented culture out here that everybody knows everybody's name. Anytime we see, you know, friendlies walking through the door, we already got their order on it. So we don't want to yes. We're always grateful to the locals that come out by us, but we're even more grateful, or just as grateful, I should say, when they invite their friends and they can become part of this too, because it has created a lot of relationships throughout the years. For sure. Being here. I always give props to a husband and wife team <laughs> that can live together and work alongside each other. And then you like, then you've also just added like the, the whole, whole family. family. Yeah. So what does that mean to you? I mean, we always kind of knew that owning a restaurant was going to be in our future. He's always had a passion for cooking. And actually the first main cooking job that he took was in a town, a one town over. Um, and that first day I was there unofficially being a sous chef because, you know, it was that first day trying out a new menu and how many people are going to come in. And, you know, I was right there beside him when he was coming up with recipes. Now I can't cook at all. Nobody wants to see me in the kitchen. It was a desperate move. It was very desperate. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me in the kitchen, but, um, I do try. They've been showing me a little bit and I've nerded it up. So I make notes and, and I'm like, okay, this has to be cooked for this long. And so I analyze it a lot more than, you know, it's not, it's not coming from my heart because my heart doesn't know how to do it. Right. Um, but I'm going to try. He brings the heart. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so we have a typical front of house, back of house relationship. Yeah. We do def definitely try to say that we won't, you know, what happens. We try not to, well, you know, have those, he didn't, we don't take he didn't, home into work and we don't take work home. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a very good yeah. move. And I think, that, <laughs> I think that what's also helped is that us not bickering, you know, usually you'll see 
front of house getting upset because back up, you know, maybe the kitchen's like taking some too long. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Um, but they, we try to lead by example where we're not, I mean, I've been in situations with previous uh, cooks before Nate was in the uh, in this position where that we were yelling, there were people yelling at each servers yeah. were yelling, where's this? And um, we, uh, we try not to do that. So then I think that there's a more cohesive, not this is my front of house and this is my back of house. So we just try to do it like that. Yeah. It's a close knit group, all of us. We, we do call it crawfish crew or crawfish family, but that's because a lot of these people that are here have been here for years and years. Mm -hmm. Some of my best friends are working here. A buddy of mine, 25 years we've known each other. He started working here about a year ago. Well, thank you so much for, for having us and sharing more about what you've worked so hard to create here and that, that you know, you're linking arms with your family in order to, to bring something special to your community, which is almost an extension of your family as well. Yeah, it sounds absolutely. like everybody's really embracing you and for this beautiful food. Let's cheers. Yeah, cheers well done. Well, folks, this is Crawfish Junction and the only thing missing is you. I'm Jacqueline Maines, your hostess with the mostest at ABR. And until next time, where we show you where the best local eats are. Bye, everyone. Yeah.